let us begin our learning journey of the relationship management practice by understanding the key concepts of the practice. This is section one of the course. There are seven sections in this training. From section one, there will be five Bloom's level two questions in the exam, meaning understanding level questions. Section one is a rather long section because there are five questions out of the 20 in the exam. Similarly, section two is also rather long. Again, another five of the 20 questions and the sections three onwards until seven are smaller sections because together they carry a total of 10 marks of the 20 in the exam. Our courseware is based on the syllabus for the exam. And um, here the syllabus is as follows. We will need to understand the purpose of the practice and also the practice success factors and the key metrics that are associated with this practice. And there are several key terms and concepts such as types of relationships in organization, which are namely business associate, business friend, personal friend. And then there are also service relationships between organizations such as basic, cooperative and partnership. And then there are the steps of a service relationship journey, such as explore, engage, offer, agree, on board or off board, and then co-create and realize. And then we do have the relationship models as well. Let us begin with the purpose of the practice. The purpose of the relationship management practice is to establish and nurture the links between the organization and its stakeholders at strategic and tactical levels. It includes the identification, analysis, monitoring, and continual improvement of relationships with and between stakeholders. Relationships are common in business. It can be internal or external. And the, this practice establishes the links or the relationships at two levels, at the strategic level and at the tactical, meaning the operational process levels. And then those relationships need to be nurtured meaning to be taken care of as well. And as part of the practice, relationships need to be identified periodically. They need to be analyzed for their effectiveness. And uh, they need to be monitored, first of all, if they are going on okay or not. And if not, the analysis will be done to understand the reasons for any issues. And then continual improvement would be done based on that. Therefore, the practice focuses on ensuring successful relationships within an organization and also between the organization and its external parties such as customers, suppliers, regulators, and so on. So this will be done using a common approach, relationships and relationship management that can be adopted and followed across the organization. And it is an important component of an organization's culture. We will soon understand what this relationship approach means. It's mainly a set of principles, but we will take a look at it in a more clearer way shortly. Now, I was just mentioning about the culture, meaning uh, the uh, relationship management uh, is an important component of the organization's culture. And culture can be related to sharing mutually recognized goals, uh, no blame cooperation and collaboration, continuous learning, open and transparent communications, conflict prevention and mediation. Now, these aspects of the culture are mainly the approach to the relationship management, meaning these are certain principles which need to be imbibed into the culture which are coming from the relationship management approach. Therefore, when an organization is considering no blame, cooperation and collaboration, it is a principle of relationship approach. Similarly, when they consider shared goals or mutually recognized goals, that is, it is another aspect of the relationship approach. And similarly, the others that are listed here, such as a culture of continuous learning, communications that are transparent, and prevention and mediation of conflicts in the best manner. Now, the title of these slides are still purpose of the practice because all these concepts are coming under the purpose of the practice section in the practice guide. This practice, as you can imagine, addresses the relationships not only between individuals, but also between teams and also a larger group of stakeholders such as organizations themselves. Therefore, the need to identify and then manage the stakeholders and their interest is also an important aspect of this practice. This is known as stakeholder engagement, wherein stakeholders are identified and then they are analyzed as part of the identification to understand their influence, their interest, their authority, their competencies, their potential contributions, 
and uh, a plan can be developed on how to deal with each stakeholder or a stakeholder group based on those uh, stakes that they have or the interest influence etc and then monitor those uh, stakeholder engagements and continuously improve them to maximize their support and minimize the resistance in any service endeavor stakeholders may include the uh, internal teams uh, such as team members managers executives auditors um, shareholders uh, and the external ones uh, such as customers users sponsors investors and stakeholders governments and regulators competitors partners and suppliers various social groups and professional communities now sponsors could be internal as well need not be only external as i mentioned earlier similarly auditors could be internal external shareholders again internal external usually external so these internal and external relationship management should address cultural differences between individuals and groups involved and other differentiating factors of the relationships meaning when organizations interact when teams interact there can be differences of culture between them and between individuals as well because individuals are brought up in different ways with different experiences and therefore the relationship between individuals teams and organizations can be subject to several factors and challenges and uh, and these could be the following factors uh, which uh, impact the nature of the relationship and how it works out um, such as uh, whether it's a commercial or non commercial relationship then it could be a formal or informal relationship it can be a group or individual one it can be direct or indirect an example of a direct one is pretty straight forward between two groups or people directly indirect could be uh, for example where a service delivery uh, manager is uh, having a relationship a working relationship with an account manager who further deals with the end customer therefore the service delivery manager has an indirect relationship with that customer because we have the account manager in between them we also have the professional or personal relationships then we have the voluntary or compulsory voluntary means uh, for example we have communities of interest where people may participate if they like to note that we also have the community of practice but the community of practice is different from community of interest because the community of practice is more engaged where people uh, they don't volunteer but they actually mandatory contribute to the community of practice uh, compulsory ones uh, that means uh, it could be a task force meaning they have been mandated to participate in a special endeavor it can be also mandatory participation required uh, in an event from um, certain people and then we have equal or hierarchical relationships equal meaning peers 